you are good. Yes. Yes. You are good. And in the sun and rain, that means on your good days and your bad days, my heart will proclaim. I will still say that you are good. Because I don't tell God that he's good when everything is going good. Yeah. Yeah. Because in this thing called life, we understand that some things happen, that things happen, and we can't control them. Hallelujah. We go to the doctor, and sometimes that report is not always the best. Sometimes we look at our children, sometimes they're not always doing the best. Yeah. But even in those times, can you still lift your hands God. and say, God, you're good. Come on, somebody just say, God, you're good. Lord, you are good. Come on, somebody say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Come on, say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Let me be honest about it. He's been better than good. Of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. There's something about being in the house of the Lord. There's something about coming to the house of the Lord. Well, yes, it excited. is. Yes, it is. It should make you excited. If you're not expecting God to do something in your life today, you're in the wrong place. Amen. Amen. Hey, I can go to a football team and I can expect my team to win and it not happen. When I come to the house of the Lord, I expect me to win. Yeah. Yeah. And it always works. Yeah. But this is your first time. We want to welcome you. And uh, in the seat pockets in front of you, there is a, a welcome card, so we can get to connected with you. There it is, right? You can do it right online. You can do it on the World Worship Church app as well. Fill that out. I got a team that all they want to do is get to know you. Listen, you shouldn't be lonely if you come to church and you fill out a welcome card because we're going to call you. We're going to get to know you. We might even get in a little bit of your business, but that's okay because all we want to do is pray for you. Hallelujah. We're not trying to spread it out. We're not throwing it on Instagram. We just want to get to know you. Amen? Amen. Is that is that all right? Yes. Is that all right to come to church and make a friend? That's okay, right? Yeah. Listen, you may leave service and you may not meet anybody, but I got a team that just all I want to do is meet on there. Okay? All I want to do is get to talk to you. They're talking back here, so they want to do announcements. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take the offering here, and I want to give you a couple um, ideas of ways that you can give, okay? So I know you guys, I'll probably already know this, but I know we've got a lot of new people here, so I just want to show you guys a couple ways to give. I don't know if they have those flyers ready for me, but you can give through the World Worship Church app. How many people know that we have a World Worship Church app? Wonderful, wonderful. How many people go on the World Worship Church app? Oh, praise the Lord. Y'all making my job easy. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You can also get on the uh, World Worship Church website. How many people have been on the World Worship Church website? Wonderful. How many people watch sermons on the World Worship Church website if they miss it? Hey, man, look at y'all. Y'all up with technology. Okay, got one last one for you. How many know World Worship Church has a YouTube and you're on it? Oh, yes. Okay, now when I get on there and say hello, and I talk, start talking to you through the chat, you can just talk back. That's okay. You can comment on there. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Amen? It's not just me. We got people that just chat on YouTube just so that they can create a, a culture of connection. Amen? So feel free to be a part of that as well. So let's pray for the offering. Father, we thank you for what you're doing at World Worship Church. Lord, we thank you that you would honor, we would honor you with our ties, Lord. We would honor you with our time, our talent, and our treasure. Lord, we know that you're going to use it for your glory. Lord, we thank you, Father, that as we send missions out to the world, Lord, that those seeds are good ground, Father. I thank you that you would bless it. I thank you, Lord, that you would see your glory in it. I thank you, Lord, you would see your glory in our lives. Lord, we thank you that you are good, that you are awesome, that you are great. That you are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, Lord, that you are a provider. We honor you, Lord. We honor you in everything that you have given to us. We give it back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I am excited for Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Y'all did it right. I'm excited for Resurrection Sunday. It is next week. We got a special presentation for them beautiful children. So make sure you come and be a part of it. Bring your family members. They got skits playing. They got songs playing. They That's got, all right. That's they got all, all right. Kinds of good stuff. So make sure you come be a part of it. It's going to be great. Service starts at 10 a.m. Amen. Amen. Now, how many parents we got in the room? Let me see your hands one more time. I'm just trying to get you blood flowing a little bit. Okay, parents, here's the deal. Practice is Saturday at 10 a.m. It's only going to be an hour from 10 to 11. Amen? Put your hands up one more time if you're still a parent. <laughs> I got some of y'all. I got some of y'all. That's okay. Practice is at 10 a.m., so make sure you be here the, the Saturday before Easter so we can make sure we got all the kinks worked out. We don't want your kid coming up here looking crazy. I think one time Abel came up here and just rolled around. We just want to make sure we got all that all right, okay? Amen. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. And uh, let me see here. Next step membership class is this Sunday. If you're interested to know more about who we are and where we're headed, 
We're going to be right back there in the conference room where Pastor Wayne is going to talk a little bit more about War Worship Church, who we are, and where we're headed. Okay, so if you are looking, I know I talked about filling up that connection card to meet somebody. If you're looking to just really meet somebody, come and be a part of it. You're going to learn some more, and that's your next step. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I think that's it. I got one last one, one last request. If you have been at World Worship Church for a while and you're trying to say, where would I volunteer? Where can I serve? I'm going to get plugged in. Amen. Richard told me today, he said, listen, Pastor Josh, we need some media people. We need some camera people. We need some media people that can run cameras and do different things. So, if you have any inkling at that at all, that's okay. Or if you have no inkling at that at all, that's okay. We'll train you. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's stand back to our feet as we jump back into worship. Amen? Amen. I want you guys to say one thing with me. I am, I am expecting, expecting God to move. God to move. And this altar is open. If you want to come and just worship Him. How we want to express the worship, this altar is open for this, this last song that we're about to sing. We pray to declare that God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I don't care what kind of week you had last week. Right now, in this, in this moment, in his presence, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Because you can leave one way. You can come in one way and leave a totally different way. Because you're in the presence. You have, you've experienced the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I never came out of the presence of the Lord and I didn't feel new. Because that was my expectation. Yes. Anytime I go into the presence of the Lord, I expect God to say something. I expect God to show me something. I expect Him to say something to me. Hallelujah. That, may, that will make me better. That will make me a better husband. That will make me a better father. That will make me a better friend. That will make me a better Christian. Hallelujah. So this altar is open. However, you want to come, if you want, even if you want to stay in your seat, this altar is open for you to express and just whatever burdens you want to lay down at the altar at His feet, you have the opportunity to do that. Can we just lift our hands in His presence? Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord.
we can do that because he cares for us. And there's a great exchange. You can give him your pain and he gives you joy. You can give him your confusion and he gives you peace. You can give him your weakness now and he'll give you strength. He can give you your, mis your misunderstanding and he give you wisdom. Anybody ready to take your hands off of your stuff and put it in the hands of Jesus? And this one person ain't got it. Put it in the hands of Jesus. Why don't you take your control and give that to Jesus? And let him give you peace for the situation. You can't control it anyway. So why don't you just give it to Jesus? Why don't you take a few moments right now and give it to Jesus? I know we've had praise and worship, and I know some of you are ready to move on with the rest of the service. But I want to give you 20 seconds to 30 seconds for you to offer just the worship to the Lord straight from your heart. for your life. Thank Him for your situations. Thank Him for the situation that you're in it's not even all the way right. Amen. That's it. Thank you. Just thank Him. It's not all together, but it's definitely not how it used to be. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. I may not be healed from everything. Lord, you definitely delivered me from so many. I thank you for those things. Thank you. I thank you for those things. Thank you for those things. Thank you, Jesus. I might have pain in my back, but I don't have pain in my legs anymore, Lord. I thank, thank you, Jesus. I might have pain in my head, but I don't have pain in my heart, Lord, anymore. I thank you for that. But I saw you bring another one out of the hospital, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We used to thank God for the use of that two-day rock limbs. We used to thank God for the blood coursing through our veins. We used to thank God for our life, for our health, and our strength. Hallelujah. We might not have eaten this morning, but there's food in the cupboard, so I thank you.
out to it, greet people, tell them that I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Take all of that ministry you got in, 
then you need to come on and get this, this training. Now, I don't have any dates for you because she's made a request. And so then she's going to give me those and I'm going to tell you those, uh, uh, I'm going to let you know when those are going to come. She's going to be going over ways to connect, ways to minister, because, you know, we minister differently here than there. She was about equipping the saints so you could go do the work of the ministry. So it's a little different. Uh, she'll be talking about understanding the population, which is very important. Uh, prayer, the ton of prayer that you're going to do uh, there. you got to understand that, you know, when you, when you pray there, you can pray with your eyes closed if you want to. <laughs> and some of you are learning how to pray with your eyes closed. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> 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 Y'all laughing. Jesus said, watch and pray. That's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> watch and pray. All right. And then also the sole purpose, the whole purpose of uh, street ministry. Am I getting that right? And so I'm going to give you those uh, those dates. And we're calling on uh, men. We're calling for more men. She has uh, men who have shown up, but we want even uh, more. Amen? Amen. And even more uh, to we already talked about that already. Uh, so we're going to have more uh, men who uh, come. So I want you to be prepared for that and be praying for Minister uh, uh. Amen? Amen. 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 Everybody say Minister Amen. 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 I'm saying that because I want you to pray for it. Amen? Amen. 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 This week, we're excited about this week because this is Holy Week. Put your hands together for Holy Week. This Sunday, this Sunday, this Sunday where we celebrate the triumph of entry of Jesus into Jerusalem where palm branches were thrown down and people and children and women and men and women and children were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. The king has come in. Amen. Amen. It was an exciting uh, time for all of Jerusalem. If you can imagine all of the dancing, all of the singing and all of the cheering, uh, especially those who've known him as a healer and as a deliverer and then now seeing him as Messiah. Uh, we're, we're all coming in. Amen? Amen. And then we have Holy Monday and Holy Tuesday. For those of you who don't know, Wednesday comes up and it is Spy Wednesday. Everybody say Spy Wednesday. Spy Wednesday. Spy Wednesday is the day we commemorate where Judas betrays Jesus by going to the Sanhedrin mm -hmm. and saying that he is going to set him up. And he does it for 30 pieces of silver. silver. This thing, Judas was the one. When uh, Jesus was being anointed, and being anointed, uh, saw that it was an expensive oil that was there. Yes. But that expensive oil that could have been sold, mm -hmm. and we could have used that money for ministry. Uh -huh. and the truth was, Judas was still in the money. Uh -huh. He wanted to use the money for him. Amen? Amen. Uh, I want to talk about this very quickly. It's amazing when you think about that kind of story because when he comes into the trial for entry, he comes into uh, the city. The next thing that Jesus does is he begins to see people crying and selling in the temple. And he turns over the tables and you know, he does all those different That's things right. at, at that moment. right? And then Judas is excited about that. Because he says, Y'all know your Bibles? Yeah. Y'all yeah. your Bibles? Mm -hmm. yes, so he's excited about that. Right? But then Jesus says that he's going to destroy this temple and then build it in three days and it sucks all of the air out of the room. Judas doesn't like that. He thought he was going to empower the people. It looks like he's weakening the people. And so now he's got to get rid of Jesus. Uh -huh. We come to Monday, Monday, Thursday. We celebrate the last supper. Mm -hmm. Jesus being with all his disciples. Oh, yes. Talk about the things that he is expected and what's going on and how uh, they need to have communion. But this will be big communion mm -hmm. all together. Amen? Amen. And then from there to Good Friday. Good Friday. We all uh, love Good Friday. Amen? Amen. It's a time when Jesus is crucified. And a very sacred time. And I know many of you are going to have to work on Good Friday. There was a time when we didn't have to work on Good Friday. That's right. Uh, but we're losing uh, those kind of spaces. But it's time when we get to celebrate and really consider the sacrifice that was made and the blood that is washing our souls. Amen? Amen. Uh, then on to Holy Saturday, uh, which some call Black Saturday. It's the day where Jesus is still in the tomb. 
from Friday to Saturday, mm -hmm. still in the tomb or early Sunday, mm -hmm. until we get to Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I don't know what Easter is and think it's some pagan holiday. <laughs> but Resurrection Sunday is the day where my Lord got up. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But today, uh, and when we talk about the re relevance of Palm Sunday, what it means for today. Uh, it was 500 years uh, ago, 500 years ago, where uh, a Muslim uh, Muslim sultan uh, did something very egregious. Knowing that Jesus was at the top of Mount Olives, and the Bible says he came down from Mount Olives after crying over Jerusalem, and then he begins to walk through what's called the beautiful gate. And walking through the beautiful gate, he enters into what is old Jerusalem. And then if you notice, there's a golden dome on the other side of that wall. Uh -huh. That's the dome of the rock there. That's the Temple Mount. When Jesus walks into old Jerusalem, he walks into the place closest to the Temple Mount. Mm. This sultan 500 years ago, if you notice those arches, see those arches there, that's the gate. He sealed that gate. He sealed that gate, 16 feet of concrete. Mm. And then, if you notice below that gate on the hill, all those white and yellowish structures, that's one of the largest cemeteries is right outside that gate. The Sultan did this because he heard a rumor that the Messiah was going to come through that gate and he was going to set up his kingdom. Mm. He found it somewhere in some holy book. Who knows what that is? <laughs> the Messiah is coming and when he comes, he's going to come through the beautiful gate. Mm. And he's going to walk in the temple mount and set up his kingdom. So there, for 500 years, Muslims have been burying their dead there. The Lord's not coming. There's no Messiah coming through there. You got to understand that according to Ezekiel, even the Jews believe the Messiah is going to come through that gate. So you sealed it up so it wouldn't happen. But here's what you and I know. You can put 32 feet of concrete if you want to. <laughs> That's not going to stop my Jesus. Uh -huh. no. You put all those graves there if you want to. Amen. But he has the keys to death. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Move those graves out of the way. Call yes. them to get up and recognize who he is. Yes. Listen, you're going to get something special this morning. You know what it is? 
Yeah. Yeah. She's helped leaders and teams reach their full potential by assisting them to understand their gifting and purpose. And she's a mother of three children, Demond, uh, Sharika, and Kendra, and one granddaughter, Tanaya. <clears throat> Most importantly, she is a woman of faith and a transformational vision specialist. Baby girl. 
that your word is blessed, that your word is you. And so we ask that you would please enough to teach us. And then God let it fall on good ground and let it take root in all of our lives. And then don't just sit there dormant, but spring up and do all that you've called it to do. And because we know you are good God just like that, we're going to go ahead and say thank you. Because we believe it's already done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And amen. All right, you may be seated in this prayer. Pastor Dwayne was reading my Bible. I was like, well, she do a lot. She has to sit down somewhere. Uh, but one of one of the things that I do is real estate. And as I was reading the scripture again this morning, even in my travel, he said, uh, let's talk about the plans. Because what do you do when God is really doing something that you just can't see? In my real estate business, I had an opportunity to work for some builders in new construction. And I would often sit in the model and look out the window as they were uh, beginning this construction. He said, but it, the vision, come on, here it is. The vision never really starts there. I know when you go out to look at the homes, they look really beautiful and all of those things that and, and you're talking with the representative and you're excited because you had an opportunity to walk through the model and, and see all of the decor and all of that stuff. But it really starts with vision. Really starts with somebody has to have a plan. Amen. And so the owners would, would already have this vision even before they purchased the land of what it is they want to put on the land. And then there's surveys and, 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 and all kinds of permitting and all of those things that have to happen. And they meet with this architect and they begin to talk out their vision. And the architect has to catch the vision. And then has to be able to put pen to paper to draw it out. Say that, Pastor. All right. What this visionary is describing, somebody got to be able to draw it. Right. Maybe that's why Rebecca tells us that we got to write it and make Come it clear. Now. But I don't have time to go down that road today. <laughs> so they would take this and then they would give us what they call a rendering. Yeah. Not the actual blueprint, but they would give us a rendering so that we as the salespeople could have an idea of what is coming. Mm. I can't see it yet. Ooh. But it gives me an idea that somebody behind the scenes is working on something. All right, now. All right. I then got to be able to talk to the prospective homeowner that's coming in that they may not even know how to read the rendering. We'll never get the opportunity nine times out of ten to meet the owner. To meet the visionary. But because I've had an opportunity to sit with them. And because I've had an opportunity to hear them articulate that there is something that's coming. That's good. I now got to be able to catch this vision in my spirit and be able to articulate it too. There's nothing but dirt here. Mm. All right. Here you go. All right. Now. All right. But it always won't be dirt. And I said, well, maybe that's what Jeremiah is really trying to tell us is that when when God is doing something we can't see, we in a dirt sea. Woo! And nobody really wants to be in the dirt, but the dirt is where we grow. All right, man. All right. The, 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 the dirt is necessary. The dirt really is your problem. Huh. Okay. The dirt really is your storm. The, the dirt really is your tribulation. Yes. And I know it feels like maybe God ain't doing anything. That ain't good in English, but it's okay. That God is not doing anything, but, 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 but he's behind the scenes. Yes, he is. The blueprint has already been drawn up. Yeah, yeah. Lord, come on. When you look at Jeremiah's life, 
we get to chapter 29, it's, he's really trying to encourage us. Because in chapter 21, he had no clue what was going on. In chapter 1, excuse me. Chapter 1, God was having a conversation with him saying, at age 17, saying, I've called you. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. God, my God. Yes. To be a prophet to the nation. Yes. But Jeremiah is 17. Mm -hmm. and, and he said to God, and he said, kind of like my lady, God will play. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a youth. I don't know what to say. And this ain't gonna work for me. We find later on in this conversation that he also has the spirit of fear. Because God tells them, don't be afraid of their faces. That's right, that's what he said. But look at this, he says, Jeremiah, you really don't get no choice in this situation. Because the plans, the plans, <laughs> have already been drawn up. Yeah, go ahead now. So we struggle 
in these battles that's really not even ours. Amen. Amen. We struggle in these places that if we would just lean in and to God, I really understand that I don't know what you're doing, but because you already told me that you are doing something, I'm going to trust that it is for my good. All right. Because you promised me that you wouldn't harm me. And look, and he says, the plan is to prosper you. Yes, yes. That's so all right. For you. Uh huh. If I'm not prospering, Jesus. I have not reached his whole plan. Yes. All right, all right. We teach holisticness at our ministry. And so, listen, you got to prosper in your finances. You got to prosper in your spiritual well-being. You got to prosper in your emotional health. You got to prosper in... Yeah. I've got to have everything that belongs to me. So when the Lord is important because... The Lord symbolizes that he has the power, mm -hmm. that he has the authority. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a master ruler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name in, 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 in Hebrew, excuse me, means Adonai. Yeah. Kairos. Yeah. It means my Lord. <laughs> so he's telling us here from... He says, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. He said, tell them for me today. He said that I'm always intentional. Yes. Always. Amen. Oh, yes. yes. I'm always intentional. He's a God that's all known. Uh -huh. He's a master creator. Yes. Yes. And he's a God that never, never, never makes mistakes. Amen. 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 So I said, okay, well, what is this? He said, tell them that their eyes have not seen yet. All right, now. Their ears have not heard yet. Uh huh. It hasn't even entered into their hearts. <laughs> That's what I'm about to do. All right, now. Because the way that happened when ahead of me tried to tell my story. <laughs> <laughs> because here we are on Palm Sunday. So I'm fully aware of the season and the time. Amen. Mm. Commemorate that he is about to enter into Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Thank you that you left me this one part to tell again. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he tells his disciples to go ahead of me. Yes, he did. All right, yeah. All right now. Yeah. He said, because up ahead, there was a coat. Mm. Yes. It's tied up. Yes. Uh-huh. Let, let me pause right in there and ask you, what are you tied up to? Woo! All right, now. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> what, are you, what are you tied up to? <laughs> because on this Palm Sunday, he said, loose it. Loose it. Loose it. Go ahead. Okay, read it. It's recorded in all the gospels, but read it. He says they bring him this donkey, and they bring him this coat. Uh huh. But the, the donkey symbolizes the old covenant. All right. All right. And the coat that's never been written symbolizes that he's entering into a season, Ooh. into Jerusalem, into a place of peace, because he's going there to bring us this new covenant. Yes. All right. Lord, have mercy. That's all right. I say, well, God, we get excited. I, I do. Let me raise my hand. I get excited about resurrection. Yeah. Because he died so that I could have this, this privilege. Yeah. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. He said, but Palm Sunday is just as important. Because it's there we go through transition. Yes. All right, now. You better say that. Then he takes what you're bound to. 
Uh huh. And he says, let's not look that. Because I'm going to symbolize for them that there's something greater on the other side of it. Yeah. That you don't have to stay bound. Yes, you don't have to. Mm. Okay, so every new season, there also has to be, uh oh, there has to be a goodbye. All right, now. All right, all right. All right, now, preach it. And a lot of times the reason we can't get to a new season because I'm still bad. All right, now. To what's holding me in the old season. Preach it. Preach it. Lord, have mercy. Hang on a second. Preach it. Preach it. She says that, that I'm still bound to what's holding me in the old season, but the new thing is still waiting for me. All right. This, this is how he tells me. He says, well, I have walked out every one of your days. All right. Yes, he has. I've already arrived before you get to tomorrow. I've already been there. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm conditioned tomorrow that you're coming. Preach it! Preach it! Doing 
A new thing. A new thing. Yeah. All right now. Which means you're not doing it. <laughs> but because I have plans for you. Go ahead now. I've already made provisions for you. Yeah. And a new thing. All right. Amen. 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 Y'all read the Bible? Yes. 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 It says, I like this. Let me have you. That's how I like to do this at home. What is he going to do? It says, now. 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 Go ahead, now. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all missed that. Yes. Hallelujah. When is he going to do it? Now. Now. You almost got it. When is he going to do it? Now. I didn't, I didn't 
talked, I didn't call no prayer meetings. I didn't pull no oil. I just went in my own prayer closet. Yeah. All right now. All right. All right. And I said, well, listen, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, you said. You said. That you have plans. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And it's plans to prosper me. Prosper. Yes. yes. So I talked to the judge who's above all the judges. Go ahead now. Go ahead. It's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Preach it, honey. Preach it. And I walk in the courtroom. And I sit down with my legs crossed. Go ahead now.
close your eyes and lift your hands just right in front of you that you might receive something. And I want you to say to your soul, can't you see it? Somebody speak to your soul, speak to your mind. Can't you see? Can't you see what God is doing? Don't you perceive it? Can't you feel it? Don't you hear it? God is doing something new. Can't you see it? Don't you see the signs all around? Speak to your soul now. Don't you see what's happening? God is doing a new thing. I want you to take those hands and now receive. I want you to lift those in the air now. I pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the many gifts that you give to the church. We thank you for Apostle Juanita Jackson and the gift that she is to us. I ask you right now that you bless her. Bless everything that pertains to her. Yes, Bless God. her children and her children's children. Yes, but I thank you, Lord, to a thousand generations of them all be blessed. Yes, thank you, God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers her and her family. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord, as much as she poured out, she pour back into her, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our brothers and sisters right now. For whatever it is that they are facing, whatever it is that they're going through, we thank you, Lord, that your plans, your plans, plans, plans more than one, yes, thank you, Lord, yes, yes. will not fail and do not fail. And your word is sure. Thank you, Lord, thank you. for stirring up our hearts, stirring up our faith, Lord, for one more day, one more week, one more month, one more year to keep on going. Thank you, Lord. For this blessed Holy Week to celebrate you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we open up our gates right now. We thank you, Lord, that the King of Glory is coming into our lives. Thank you, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, don't let any concrete be over our hearts. Amen. And all the dead bodies that's in front of us, we thank you, Lord, that you speak life to all of those things. So that when you come into this place, put your hand over your heart now. When you come into this place, you are welcome. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome into my heart. You're welcome into my soul. Would you repeat after me right now? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. Heal me. Heal me. Forgive me for all of my transgressions. My iniquities, all those things that I've done against your will, I ask you for forgiveness now. Thank you for the new covenant, the blood of Jesus on my life. I believe in my heart that you sent him to die for my sins, and I am grateful. I repent of those things now. I repent of those things now. Whatever they are, whatever they are, I turn away from them. I turn away from them. Lord, I turn away from lying. I turn away from lying. I turn away from cheating. I turn away from, I, I turn away from what my eyes see. What I allow my ears to hear. What I allow my ears to hear. What I allow my mind to think. Lord, I turn away from addiction. I turn away from unhealthy emotions. When I turn away from anything that doesn't please you. Now, Lord, come alive in me. Be with me. And thank you for allowing me to be with you. Lord, I just want to pray over all of these men, men and women and children. I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing them through and through, Lord. Every household that's represented, I thank you for your anointing to be in that household, resting on that household. I thank you, Lord, that while we were here receiving your word, while we were here understanding more about you, while we were here serving and taking care of the house of God, I thank you, Lord, that you are taking care of all of the situations that we left at home. 
I thank you, Lord, that you are healing all the issues that we left at home. That when we return, that nothing will be the same. Our house will be the same, nor will we be the same, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you continue, Lord. Even this week, if something comes up to fight against us, we thank you, Lord, that you would fight against those that fight against us. I thank you that every obstacle will be brought low. Every valley will be exalted. Every mountain will be brought low. I thank you for the power and the strength to do your will and be your people, Lord. Lord, and I thank you right now for the blood of Jesus that covers your people, protects them from evil and the evil one. And I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to keep our hand in your hand while you lead us on the path towards everlasting life. If you believe that, I want you to put your hands together right now.